Following the Mile 7 Akum incident that left five Amu maize and buses destroyed and the highway linking Bamenda and Bafusam cut off by unidentified armed men, the governor of the Northwest region on Sunday passed a communique prohibiting the movement of persons from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. To this effect, the streets of Bamenda are busy with everyone rushing to carry out their activities within the day as traffic can be seen as the order of the day. Travel agencies are not left out of this ordeal as they too have been affected and now try to manage their passengers with the changing times. Uh, passengers came, there are just so many people traveling this, uh, since they started this curfew. And then uh, people have paid for the buses leaving in the evening or the morning they have already gone. And then for the evening, others have prepared to stay here and uh, wait for their buses since we will be leaving by 3 p.m. So that they should not miss their buses because so many of them have been missing have been missing their buses that's why they have decided to stay here and wait for the 3 p.m for the morning as uh, it's 8 a.m for the evening it's 3 p.m because the loaders too will need time to put luggages in there because so after all that they will loot everything put everybody uh, everybody's luggages in the bus then they should so, so, so as to save time and the workers too will need to rush back home before they uh, get you to begin. Going through the agencies this morning, people are in a rush to buy travel tickets as some move from one agency to another, ensuring that 6 p.m. does not meet them in Bamenda. Agencies are full with both youths and adults who have been seated in the sun for hours waiting for their buses. I already pay my ticket, so they say the bus come at 3 o'clock for more than two hours. These passengers who already have their tickets are sure of traveling before 6 p.m. today, though the buses they have paid for are not yet within eyesight. Travel agencies too are unable to satisfy those who are running away due to the scarcity of buses that has left most of the passengers stranded, but they haven't given up. Since morning we are here, there's no car. The agencies are full. There's no space. They are saying that we should come tomorrow morning again. And in the village, there's no way all of them are. That means every, everybody have run on the so she's supposed to leave also. She cannot stay there and die. As, as, as you can see behind me, there are many people who want to travel, but there's not enough car. We don't even know how these people could uh, will do to to reach for the for the, for the other side. They are not they are not cars. Um, it was quite difficult getting the bus because you can see the people were many, just so many. But finally, I had one. But it's not yet here. But very soon, it's coming and we'll be leaving. Since yesterday, we don't sleep for eight days. Since yesterday, we have been here. We want to run away, but there are no buses. So many people have died in the village. If you look here, you will see so many people. The inavailability of buses has left some with no choice as they keep passing nights at travel agencies just to get a bus. The increasing insecurity situation in most neighborhoods in Boya has forced inhabitants to abandon their homes, as this is the case with Munya, a neighborhood in Boya, known to be vibrant 24 hours on 7, but the streets are almost deserted. The case is similar to other neighborhoods like Bomaka, My 16, Moliko, amongst others, where most denizens have either relocated to safer neighborhoods within the municipality, while a majority have their luggage all ready to travel out of the southwest region. Jam Park, like a beehive, is a description of the My 17 motor park which remains heavily flooded by travelers. <laughs> To some denizens, traveling out of the region is due to the rising insecurity. Total out migration because of the insecurity which we now have in the Anglophone region. It is because the people have waited for long for a long lasting solution and no party is willing to come to the discussion table to put a final full stop to these problems. The way the, the thing is happening there now is something for us to pack. People are leaving. Eh? People are leaving. Nobody wants to stay because people are dying. So we are confused. We don't even know what to do. We don't even know where we are running to. Going out of Bomi Indo, it does not solve the matter. To me, let's pray to God. A move considered as a solution by some traveling out of the region is, however, a contrary idea with others who trust in God while calling on dialogue. My cry is that we should come together as Christian faithful and pray unanimously. That God who have the heart of men 
we touch the hearts of the stakeholders involved in this matter to bring a long-lasting solution to it. That is through dialogue. It is worth noting that the burning of some vehicles at my 16 yesterday, September 12, further sparked panic, slowing down economic activities, with an increasing number of persons relocating out of this part of the Southwest region. Circulation from the littoral region to the northwest and southwest regions would no longer be seen as from the 16th of September to the 10th of October this 2018. Some travel agencies plying the Douala Bamenda and Douala Boyo Highway would no longer circulate. With recent happenings in these two English-speaking regions, notably that of Akum over the weekend, and the official 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew instituted by Northwest Governor Adolf Lele Lafrique, there is an urgent need to readjust traveling hours. Visiting Bonaberry in the Douala 4 municipality, most of the agencies traveling to the Northwest and Southwest have decided to adjust time. In the morning, buses leaving Douala have a maximum time of 9 a.m. and 12 midnight is the time for night journeys. Those leaving Bamenda for Douala must do so at 9 a.m. latest. These bus agencies would receive a serious drop in income most of the officials see as the number of 70-seater buses loaded per day have reduced from 8 to 2. In the southwest region, the situation even seems more complicated with riots reported on a daily Though administrators in these travel agencies decry a loss, they remain positive it is for the better of both their staff and passengers. Eleven days is the free time period for goods to leave the Douala port terminal. Gone past this day, goods stationed at the port would be moved after a concrete pay. About what you call the the, 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 the external site of stacking of long-standing containers. Long-standing containers are containers that are not removed from the main terminal within the free period, the free time period, free time period. which is 11 days for imports. Okay, because the terminal, the port is not meant to stack okay, containers but it's there as a transit, the port is a, the terminal is a transit area of containers, not for containers to overstay. And when continent overstay in a terminal, you see how small we are in terms of space. The town is just at the door of the port. Okay, we cannot, we cannot receive everybody as long as you as so To reduce cost of clearance duties, economic operators have been drilled on how to proceed. This was at a vulgarization seminar here in Douala on methods of goods clearance. During question and answer sessions, it was disclosed that some commissioners abuse of the ignorance of importers. Thus, the need to promote dynamism. We came here today to familiarize our, our users, who are our customers, of, uh, for, of, on all our procedures and everything that is done by the community, the port community, led by the, the, the DM of the, port auto, of the port authority and the DM of customs. And everybody is in the motion to to ease the process and to change the way we have been doing business in the past. First, the big one, the biggest one among the changes is that the openness, the openness of the community. We are no more, we are no, we are no more a closed environment. We gave, we are, we open ourselves. We gave our contacts, the full contacts, the live contacts where people can get in touch with us, no matter the kind of problem that they have in the delivery of the containers. That's the first thing to do because we know we are. This is the, the port is a security area because we need to secure the goods. But that doesn't mean that we are close to people. We are open. The, way we, uh, the digital revolution, we can be open without being physically in, on the side. And that's where we are moving. And that's why we came to give to the population, to our users, to our, cost, to our customers. Due to this procedure initiated a few weeks ago, delivery is said to have increased to 58% and the truck turn time of deliveries has moved from 2 hours 20 minutes to 27 minutes. The seminar is scheduled to end this September 13.
kidney transplant, a surgical procedure which entails replacing one or both kidneys of patients with renal failure. Kidney transplant is about to replace uh, a vital function for the body. Uh, the kidneys, their function is to filtrate, to um, evacuate toxic from blood. Live kidney transplantation. So it's a brother, a sister, a husband or wife giving a kidney because we don't need two kidneys to, uh, to, for, for, to live. So this method, common in Europe and other developed countries, yet to be carried out in Cameroon, is seen as a solution to constant dialysis sessions. Transplantation is very important because for the patients who are in dialysis, it is better for them to have to, to have a benefit from this surgery because we know that when a patient is transplanted, it is better for him more than to stay on the machine with dialysis. And an effective and expensive treatment which requires adequate precautions to limit complications during and after surgery. The first step is to carefully select the donor and the recipient. It's very fundamental and that's, that's why I'm here, so to uh, be sure everything is organized well. But the surgery is not the main part of the transplantation. The, the very uh, critical uh, period is the post-operative uh, time. This kidney transplantation was at the center of discussions this 12th of September in Douala. Urologists, nephrologists and other health experts from Africa and Europe have strategized on mechanisms to bring this technique to Cameroon and other African countries. Kasput Willemsa grew up farming this land. He thought he would die here, buried alongside five generations of his family. I'm the sixth generation that was born on this farm. Um, yeah, my children is the seventh. We are farmers from the morning until noon and night. But that may not happen, as South Africa's government says it may change the constitution to allow expropriating some land without compensation. Supporters of the move say it will fix historical wrongs that left most lands in the hands of the white minority. The government hasn't publicly identified which properties, if any, it will target. Vilimsa says that fills him with anxiety. Taking something without compensation um, is nothing but stealing. Um, buying the land and giving that to somebody else, that's a different story. But just taking it for political reasons and um, giving it away, I think that's not going to work. But the Black First Land First movement says the land was stolen from their ancestors and should be returned. We believe South Africa is a black country and we believe that uh, white people in this country are sitting on stolen property and, in, and the call to call for land expropriation without compensation speaks to historical redress. But some analysts say the government is exploiting this sensitive issue to win votes ahead of next year's elections. It is a genuine issue. But like all genuine issues, it is being mishandled with the view of uh, securing short-term political gains, unfortunately. Afroforum, a watchdog focusing on concerns of the white Afrikaans-speaking community, agrees. We are seeing a, an increase in land invasion throughout the country. So there is a definite threat to, to property rights at the moment. And the uncertainty being created by government increases that problem. Back at the farm, Willemse is carrying on. He employs 14 people, he says, and can't leave them hanging. While he agrees that South Africa's violent, unequal past was wrong, he asks, why should he pay the price? Anita Powell, VOA News, Farinahung, South Africa. STV, votre télé.
Welcome to Bamela.